me and you may have fallen out if we hadn't have called it at that moment. We have to talk like business partners. That can be a really, really hard balance to get right. You had no idea what, what you were heading into. If there's the tiniest thing that doesn't sit right, bring it up. So when I know now that I'm not living on a path that's suitable for me, boom, I'm out. Shall we talk about breaking a world record? You know, some decisions were a bit rash. I've grown 20 times more than had I not done it. My situation was messed up. What were some of the hardest moments for you towards the end of Rich and Success? Uh, Welcome to the Rich in Success podcast, the podcast that aims to define exactly what success means to you and gives you the tools to achieve this in your daily life. Hosted by action-taking mindset coach, world record holder and successful entrepreneur Matt Hall. Each week, this show brings you motivation, education and inspiration on how you can live a happier, more fulfilled and more successful life. Are you ready to take your life to the next level? If so, this is the podcast for you. Now, let today's lessons begin. Welcome back, everybody, to the Rich in Success podcast, the show that brings you motivation, education, and inspiration on how you can live a happier, healthier, more fulfilled, and more successful life. Now, this, for me, is a really, really special episode. For any of you long-term listeners, you will know that when I first began the journey that led to Rich in Success, I didn't do this alone. I was with my brother from another mother. I was with my partner in crime, my cousin, Dan Ramsden. Now, Dan is a health, well-being and sports performance coach. He is the owner of his brand, Flight coaching that is spelt f-l-i-t-e don't know why i'll ask him about it in the show because yeah i think he's just trying to be cool um do check him out and you know one of the things that i love about dan is he's always been on this journey of self-discovery of trying to be the best he can be you know he's always um challenged himself pushed himself at a high level initially in sports and then as a coach himself and he's an absolute expert when it comes to diet, nutrition, training, mindset. And for me to have the privilege of having him as a cousin, it was just, we went through, I think about maybe five, six years of training in the gym together, where we always used to say, you know, our sessions in the gym were more for our mind than they actually were for our body. Because yeah, we were doing the workouts. Yes, he was pushing me as my trainer, but we used to just talk about life, about the meaning of life, which we've not yet figured out, by the way. Unfortunately, we won't give you that in this episode. And we just kind of go through so much and we found all these commonalities and we got to this this place in our lives where we wanted to grow and we wanted to move forward and we wanted to do so in a way where we can not just do it for our own selfish reasons, but to be able to help and inspire other people along our journey. And that's exactly what we did. Now, a year ago, we decided to go our separate ways. I've obviously continued with the Rich in Success brand and the Rich in Success podcast. And today is the day that we've come back together to have a catch up, to have a conversation. Um, in this episode, we're going to talk about a range of things, including mindset. We're going to talk about mental health. We're going to talk diet, nutrition, training, lifestyle, relationships, and also in particular, what we've learned over this journey over the last year while we've been on our separate paths It's also a year, nearly to the date, since we both not only embarked on, but actually achieved breaking a world record, which was for the longest live audio only stream. We, um, the record was at 52 hours and Dan and myself managed to record a podcast for 50, I think it was about 53 and a half hours in the end, meaning that we officially broke the world record for longest live audio stream. So we're also going to talk about that in this episode. And I think if you are a person that is genuinely ready to discover what it is you want out of your life, to maybe understand a little bit more about what we need to do in order to feel a happier and a more fulfilled um, life, then I truly believe this is going to be a fantastic episode. I want to say thank you as always for everybody for being here, and please enjoy episode 139 of the Rich in Success podcast, Live a Life of Health and Happiness, with performance coach Dan Ramsden. OK, 
Okay, brother yeah. from another mother. Yeah. How are you doing, ma'am? Thank you for the intro. That was lovely. Was that all right? That was really nice. It's I... been a while. Well, it you is. You know, I'm quite rusty. I've got to say, I don't spend as much time in front of the camera as you these days, and I'm I'm a little rusty. You've like you've got you've got uber sharp at this now. Yeah. And and it just shows your level of progression as well. You know, in whatever area that you want to get good at, and you're nailing it in your way. I feel like I'm nailing it in my way. Yeah. I've got better, I've got sharper in my own way. And this is one of the things that we've always said that, you know, go find that for you. One of the things I loved when we made the decision to obviously go a different way, yeah. you know, when we said, okay, don't think working together is the next stage. One of the things um, that I remember us talking about, we did a podcast episode, right? That, you know, announcing it and talking about it. But one thing we said off camera, off mic, when we had the conversation that I'll always, always remember is we've both found our definition of success. Mm. We've both found individually what fulfillment is and what makes us happy. And I remember you saying specifically, what we've done on this journey together is we've got to a place in our life that some people never get to in 60, 70 years. They never do in a lifetime. But because we were willing to have the courage to put ourselves out there, you know, to confront some demons, to be judged publicly and go through the process together, we managed to find what really matters to us individually. And what we found is it weren't fully aligned. Yeah. And that's obviously part, part of why we didn't continue moving forward together as business partners. And that's okay. We're still together <laughs> as lovers. So we're happy. We're good. For you then, what was it? What was the reason you needed to step away from rich and success? Um, I was holding you back. I knew that my my life, you know, topsy turvy, a bit upside down. You know, people knew my journey and my path and things like that. And going through a divorce, it ain't a straightforward path. I'm still actually not divorced, and we're pretty much touching two and a half years. So, you know, as you can see with all these, you know, lulls and, and things that can potentially go wrong with progressing and developing, you know, that were a massive thing that were, it were part of your life too. And I were holding you back in, and you, you were ready to go. And I'm like, you go, you go fly mate. Like you, mm. you're, you're going that way and I need to consolidate and I need to look after number one, myself, my, my children, I were in a, a new relationship. I had lots of things that I needed to consolidate in other ways. Yeah. And then I had to do things my way because that's how, that's how I roll. I, I can only do things, um, you know, if, if it doesn't feel right, mm. the path doesn't feel right, I, I can't do it for too long. I refuse to because I recognize it now. And that's, that was the thing about what, what took me to that place of depression. I'm open about talking about that. I've been there and that was because I wasn't living an authentic life. I was living a little bit of a lie and that got pretty sinister and it got pretty deep and my thoughts spiraled out of control and I wasn't in a good mindset and a good place. So when I know now that I'm not living on a path that's suitable for me, boom, I'm yeah, out. You, yeah. and, and, and not falling out with nobody, but I, but I can't continue that because it will manifest itself in a toxic way. Somehow there will be falling outs. Me and you may have fallen out if we hadn't have called it at that moment. Mm. You know, if we'd have continued and it got a bit, little bit further, more things can happen, more things can get said. We're not, we're, you know, if we're not aligned, we're trying to force it. You can't force things. You can't. You've got to and have the courage to just it's step courage. up and, and speak. It is courage. This is something I've, I've had it with um, a couple of my clients recently. <laughs> you know, you try everything to make it work when actually, and what people do, and this is something I admire about our relationship, is what a lot of people do when they start to see those signs where things are not perfect, they either try and kind of avoid it and just brush stuff under the carpet. And talk shit behind the back. Uh, yeah, and then it's like you said, manifesting and building. Um, or they try and kind of downplay it and just kind of go, well, you know, but there's this and there's that, and you know, he's got good intentions or whatever it may be. And I just think one thing we always did and one thing that I, I think we both getting better and better and better at in business and in life is just immediately operate from a place of honesty. 
if there's the tiniest thing that doesn't sit right, bring it up. It doesn't yeah. have to be an argument. No. It doesn't have to be a confrontation. It's just, can I just point this out? This is my viewpoint. This is why I feel that way. What's your thoughts? Is this right? And then it's about being objective. Well, what's the aim here? What's the vision? Does what we're doing serve the vision or not? Yeah. And I think we always operated from that point. I'm not saying we got it perfect. Can I just say also, if somebody's speaking passionately, that don't mean to say it's an argument. Yeah. Don't take it that way. Get mm. off your, get off your po little poopy pants, <laughs> fucking pity potty party. Like, stop being, you know, like thinking that everyone's having a go at you. Like, they're speaking honestly. You know where you're at. Mm. This is where you're at. Okay, right, let's make a decision. Sometimes it, it, could, it can be said passionately in the moment. It's perception, right? Yeah. It's perception. It's that could argument. be passion or it could be aggression based on how you decide to perceive it. You've got to ask, is the intention pure? Where it, what's the intention? And I think for me and you, we always knew that about each other. Our intention is we love each other. We want the best relationship. You always said it, always said it. First and foremost, we're cousins. And I never, ever want that to change. Second of all, we're business owners. And I think as well, for any business owners that are in business with family members, you've also got to detach from being family members when you talk in business. Mm -hmm. because there were times where, I, you know, we'd have conversations. I'd be like, this is fine. We can talk about this maybe over a beer or, you know, a green shake, because I know you don't drink that much, because <laughs> you're healthy, obviously. It's me that get the beer. We can do that when we're family time, but right now we're, we're giving up the day to build a brand, mm -hmm. to build this business. We have to talk like business partners. That can be a really, really hard balance to get right. 100%, yeah. Because in your heart, you just want to be there. Like, obviously, like you said, you're going for... Divorce. I know, and my situation was messed up. And I didn't just have my own, you know, thoughts and feelings. I was trying to look after my, my kids' Children. well-being in, in the in the process and not, you know, make it as damage limitation as possible, which is hard, you know what I mean? And you get pulled emotionally. So how could I have built this brand to what it is now? Look at us now. Look at you now. Look at mm. what you're doing. Look at th look at this setup. It's growth. I wouldn't have been able to facilitate your growth. You had to go your own way for a bit and I had to go mine and that's cool. What were some of the hardest moments for you towards the end of Rich and Success where you've been pulled in all these different directions and I think importantly from a standpoint of what can people learn from, you were going through a tough time, you weren't sure, you know, you had to prioritise. What would be your best advice based on what you went through in those times based on you wanted to build this business, but you had your family that you needed to think about, you're going through a divorce, it's complex. This is yeah. the reality of life and business. Yeah. What would be your main advice based on what you learned in that period? I'd probably say be very, very intentional about what you want and, and understand that on a deep level. So when you're going down a particular route of setting a goal and what's attached to achieving that goal, well, what do I need to do? Mm. And, and and is that okay? Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you can start putting a bit of a strategy together. We were quite naive and a bit blind. Really naive. How, and how we approached it, we were just like yeah. excited as fuck in the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, wanting to do, and then we were like, right, we're just gonna go. And we just were, we were both mm. in a place where we were operating out of our window of tolerance. We were both going through hard times in our own life and we were just like, we need to act now, boom. And we just went blindfold. I Would you, uh, personally, I'll answer first, but personally, I wouldn't change that for the world. And no, I, think I wouldn't. You, you wouldn't either. No, not at all. Because you think that's how we learn to get good. Yeah. Because we were a bit delusional and a bit, yeah. you know. Yeah. But other people get excited and don't do anything. And, and we, we put ourselves out there massively, yeah. like, and you know, and publicly. For them, people are probably slate and call us behind closed doors. Look at these two dickheads. You're like, what, what are they on about? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> we, we really got certain hate on certain episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and we had to get good with that mm. either way because we knew that our intentions were pure. We were only trying to help. So it's like, well, okay, well, we'll try to help. If people hate us for that, well, it's not really our fault, is it? You know what I mean? It's not our problem if somebody else hates us for us just trying to be us and you know? learn and help others along the way. But that was always the intention, right? Yeah, and it's coming back to like what we've just done today. You didn't know what you were going to get put through on a physical level. So just to talk this through, so this is, we've been filming this morning 
for the YouTube vlog, success vlog, episode number three. If you're listening to this podcast now, of course you are. Why wouldn't you be? Because that's what, <laughs> it's my voice you're listening to. Um, right now, that episode will be live. Check it out. Um, and it was me and my cousin Dan in the gym going through a bit of a competition physically. And uh, if you want to find out who won, check out the episode. But yeah, sorry, back to what you are saying. Yeah, so... You just said, I'm going to leave it with you. Yeah. And... To create the, the workout. Yeah, and you, and you had no idea what you were walking into. And you chose at random, you know, some numbers from 1 to 10, and each number that you selected had a certain physical task attached to it. And all I'm going to say, spoiler <laughs> alert, is I wish I picked all the numbers I didn't pick. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so, and... You had no idea what, what you were heading into, but you gave it your all. Mm. That's the point. Yeah. A lot of people sit, sit on the yeah. sidelines and they want to make sure everything's perfect. Our situation was far from perfect. Mm. And what we did was not perfect, but it were perfectly imperfect for us and, and an outcome. And for, our outcome. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it were all about. That's what we were urging pe other people to do. And try and try to help other people see that. So, yeah. do I regret that? No. Would I have changed a few things? Yeah, but that's hindsight. Like, what would that you change? Thing? Uh, maybe timing of certain things. Um, you know, some decisions were a bit rash, and it would just all it would just go 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 full full gas pedal, wasn't it? You know, and we were spending some long days not really thinking things through fully mm. we were just acting and acting and acting weren't we you know just like go just go 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 uh, we've got an idea right just go yeah um but in, in that part of the journey as well do you know so would you change it well i guess not no i guess not um no because it's led us to where we are and i'm actually really happy yeah Genuinely happy now. And I can't believe that I'm saying that with how I felt yeah. in 2016, 2017. Mm. And I can't actually believe that I'm sat here saying that. Um, so, you know, on the NHS waiting list to see a mental health expert, which I'm still on waiting list for, by the way. NHS, you need to up your game. That's going I'm well actually, then. I'm actually doing all right though, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... That's where I was, and what did I have to do? I had to take action myself. Mm. So I'm just urging anybody else that's listening to this, if you are going through a tough time, take action. Don't wait around, you know, speak to the, the correct people who you need to speak to, but take the relevant action that you need to take in order for you to get better and to heal. I think you're absolutely spot on. And I think to emphasize that point, there will never be a time in, in your life where anything's perfect. There is never that perfect time to take action. And there'll never be a perfect journey, but it is that imperfection that creates the growth. And for me, you know, what you just said there about would I regret it? And then you sort of reflect and went, well, no, it's, it's, the, it's the learning through doing. We wouldn't know what we knew if we hadn't have just taken massive action and quote unquote, fucked up every, every step of the way or whatever. Mm. Now it makes us better coaches. It makes you a better father. It makes us better partners, better friends, better family people, better colleagues, whatever. Because of the experience, that people never get that experience because they're too scared to take the action. And obviously I've just recently left my mentor that I was with for 18 months. And it's so easy for people to get into this narrative of, told you so, told you like he was quiet or whatever about his personality or, you know, whatever opinion they may have. <clears throat> but I, I, again, the question is, would, going back, okay, it didn't end amazingly. But going back, would you change it? Absolutely not. Like, I've learned so much for the good and the bad, for the positives, the negatives, for the achievements and the losses. I learned through that experience, I've grown 20 times more yeah. than had I not done it. Yeah. And I always say, life's about alternatives. What's the alternative? What else would have grown me so quickly in 18 months? Um, of just going, oh, you told me not to go for him for X, Y, and Z reason. Okay, I'll stay at home then and do nothing. 
And it's through our experience that we learn, but people think it's through having conversations and reading books and learning from a text. Is it not the secret now? Oh, is it not? Oh, is it not that? Uh, maybe you got to read the Does secret just, and that'll give it, you the secret. It just manifests and the universe just rewards you. Is and that I th- not how it works? Do you know what I love though? <laughs> we, we've said this all along because actually we understood it on a certain level. But I think the longer you stick your journey of growth out and keep pushing forward, the longer you go, geez, like I'm so grateful that I did take action and it wasn't perfect because I'm now so much more stronger, more resilient. We said we had haters. You know, I've still got people that hate on me and things like that. Like, that has made me such a tougher person. It's made me understand human psychology on a deeper level from different perspectives. I understand how things can be misinterpreted based on actions I take, things I say. I'm, I become wiser through doing, not through reading. And that's just something we always want to reiterate is you're always going to feel scared to take action if it's something you've not done before. But the only way you'll ever overcome that fear is by doing it, not thinking about it. Some of the best coaches out there in the world have learned through the application. You get the knowledge. I'd suggest all of them. But then you get the application and the yeah. experience and you get the fuck-ups and the trials and tribulations. and the Just to let you know, this might happen at this point. Yeah. Just giving you a heads up. I've been where you are right now. Yeah. And just to let you know, this could potentially be the path that you're going on. That's the wisdom. That's the experience. How did you know that? You had to do it. Did it. You had to do that. It just takes time. I also think it's such a different experience. We're talking as coaches, but I think as business owners, as parents, as whatever, you know, when we started reaching success, we learned stuff from coaches and stuff that we then, if you like, regurgitated because it was like, oh, that makes sense. So we'd say things like, for example, for every level, there's another devil, you know, or, or whatever. And it would make sense logically and that you'd is say true, it. By the way. Yeah, but now <laughs> we say it so differently because we're like, we can give examples and we know how yeah. we felt. Yeah. And it's one thing understanding it logically, it's another thing going, man, I yeah. know what you're going through. Yeah, yeah. This is how I felt. It's yeah. very similar. And then as a client working with you as a coach, that's so much more impactful for them. It's substance, isn't it? Real substance to what you're saying, yeah. not just it's chat. Not just a quote. It's not just I've, I've read it and I've retained it in my mind, and there you go. That's it. I've got nothing else for you, right? Well, well, how can you back that up then? And I think it just rounds you a lot more in the application, in the doing, in the trials and tribulations, and the failing, and and all the rest of it. Like you just got to go out there and do it, and and do it with fucking bells on, like we did, because it's really the best did. way. It's it is the best way. I wouldn't change a thing. So, obviously, one of the last things we did together is break a world record. That was pretty cool. That was all right. That was <laughs> literally a year ago, almost to the date. So it was the 24th of July we broke the world record. And it was literally just after that that then you left and we went our separate ways. Yeah. One question I've just thought of that I'd never planned on asking, and I don't think I've asked you ever, behind the camera or in front of it. Do you regret leaving Rich in Success? <sighs> Yes and no. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I loved what we, I loved what we started. I I still love it. I'm Mm. still, I'm still a fan of it. You know what I mean? I'm like, I want to see that, that true potential growth that I know that it has and it'll, and it will get there. It just, it just didn't have me involved in it anymore Mm. because, you know, quite frankly, there were certain things about, about me that I had to get better at. I had to I had to man up a lot in in my own way, as in IT skills and and things like that. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. there were there were things that I were lacking in my ability to become better. So I had to delve back in and learn. I also had to learn more for me about being a better coach in what I do. Yeah. I had to have more tangible tools in my locker. So I knew that going down a, a certain route of it would just it would just become too motivational mm. type for me, you know, and it were and, and and it were going down that route of it were taking me away from a more expertise standpoint in like sports and conditioning and, and health and things like that. So I wanted to go come out of that and go back into my realm and then I had to go learn again, yeah. which I did. I invested in a coach myself. Um I'm part of the ATG uh, for coaches group which is a phenomenal 
um, the revolutionising the, the fitness industry, and it's uh, run by Keegan Smith and Ben Patrick. They are geniuses. Mm. They are hundred percent like, and they're getting a lot of, you know, hype and and the well thought of in the in the fit, health and fitness industry. I had to go in and I'm like, I want some of that. Yeah. What they're doing, what they're up to. I need to learn because they're growing. They're going off on, on their tangent and I wanted to go back into that. Mm. So, and we always said that this is open to, it could change. We might, we might collab again like we are now. You know, that were quite, you just sent me a text or a voice note and just said, Dan, do you fancy doing this? I'm like, yeah, because I love it. And because we, we can. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't fall out. So that's the thing. Like we always said that we'd be open to go back there again. Yep. It's just you had to go your way for a while. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons, again, and I'm, I'll be honest, you know, Llewellyn won't for me completely, but it was for you at the time. And it yeah. and it's served you well in a lot of areas. Mm. And you had to go that way, but that just weren't for me at that time. So, you know, and I knew that that could be taking us on a path that, that I didn't want to go on. Didn't want to go on, yeah. And that's it. You know, there were no, but there were no falling out. It's just straight up honesty. That's how it is. And now we're here. So, you know, there's a yes, there's a yes and no factor to it because I love where it was going, but it was just still pulling me a little bit away from what what I'm truly passionate about. Yeah. You know, so who's to say what the future's going to hold? I don't know. Like I'm not open. Always will be. But that's the thing. <laughs> And that's the difference. A lot of people, it's like, oh, well, that's done. Oh, and then, and then it becomes, um, like we said, it becomes an argument and it becomes that door's fully shut and the door's never been shut for either of us. No, and it, and it shouldn't be. And it, can things be damaging for your brand and can it be irreversible? Sometimes, yeah, it can be. You know, if it's something that's like, mm. I don't know, maybe racial or, you know, something that's just like, no, nah, your brand stinks. Like, you're done. You're done. <laughs> Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But we're never going to be that way. No. So the door's always going to be open. Yeah. That's it. Shall we talk about breaking a world record? Shall we? What was that like for you? Because it's something we kind of have touched upon as family members talking about a big thing we've done. But I don't think we've ever really... Because we were just chatting for 53 and a half hours, non-stop, <laughs> right? Funny. When you get to the end of something like that, first of all, all you want to do is sleep. Second of all, all you want to do is never talk to anyone again. So in the, in the, yeah. normally when you go through an event in life, immediately after you dissect it and you talk about it, we never really did that, really. Well, we were spent, weren't we? We were you done. Know, we were absolutely done. And then but... literally after that, we, we stopped working together. So, shall we have that chat now? What was that experience like for you, man? We broke a world record. I know, it were, it were an amazing feeling. It were an amazing achievement. Obviously, you, you don't get handed something like that on a plate. It's You've got to work hard for it. But I've got to say, in all honesty, when you set a goal and you set a mind to a task and then you plan accordingly to be able to achieve it, as long as you believe in yourself that you can do that, mm. it ain't as bad as you anticipate it being. We were having deep and meaningful conversations with so many awesome people yeah. that were educating, inspiring, motivating in lots of different ways. Well, isn't that what we'd like to do anyway? Mm. So it wasn't actually that bad, mm. you know? It, like, it was tough staying awake all that time. But people are like, oh, you're mad. I'd have been, I'm doing that anyway. I love talking deep and talking about, you know, learning new things and you know, I love that. So it can't have been that bad, can it? And we did it. We could have carried on. We just were like, we've done it, haven't we? Like, let's call it a wrap. You know, we were thinking about other people that were involved that day as well. Mm. Like, it, it weren't just our effort. Yeah, the whole you know, team. Your, your dad were unbelievable, absolute trooper. Even my dad got involved. He started to pick up momentum towards the end. He, mm. were, he were asleep in back room, like, Dang. on the first day. Oh, wow. At yeah. about five o'clock, well, having a started. power nap. And it was just like, are you for real, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. come <laughs> like on. Asleep Moral already. support and all that. <laughs> Cheers, Phil. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, my, my girlfriend, Kayleigh, yeah. you know, unbelievable. Your mum. So there were lots of people behind the scenes. That all were, the volunteers. That were, that were and, helping yeah. it. Yeah, and everybody that were here to witness it, who, who we uh, managed to go up in for some graveyard shifts and stuff like mm. that. Because they had to stay with us all that time and sit and witness us doing it. So... You know, it weren't just us yeah. doing that. And yeah. I'm really appreciative 
of all those people that did that. And it just goes to show that when you do something positive and you're putting something out there that's for the greater good, how many people want to jump Absolutely on that wanna and, help. and want to help out? You know, they took the time out on a weekend to, to do that. Like, credit to them as well. So, yeah, I loved it. Um, there were some funny moments as well. There were some very bizarre moments, at least. Those yeah. early morning, 3 a.m. Because that's the thing. You have a long day when you're delivering content, you're speaking, and you get to the end of that day and you're like, wow, I'm done. Well, then we've got to keep going past midnight, past 1 a.m., past 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And at yeah. that point, you just start being delirious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you got We were only allowed um, no longer than five seconds dead air time. So if we paused for, five, for six seconds, the world record's off. So you've got to keep that momentum going. And when you're doing that at 4 a.m. on the second day in a row of not sleeping. Yeah, yeah, that wow. was special. When you, when you, I, I'd reached a peak of, of delirium when you were speaking to Lee Brennan. Yeah, I remember. And I, I'd scheduled a 30 minute power nap because we were allowed 30 minutes. Was it 30? I thought it was less, but maybe it was. I think it was. <clears throat> well, yeah. I'd, it felt like less. It felt like 30 seconds, to be honest. Horrible. That was the worst point in the whole thing, is waking up from that. Well, you're so stimulated. You, you, my eyes, like, it was mad. I closed my eyes to go to sleep, but they'd not been closed for that long. And I was seeing patterns and shapes because we'd been looking at a screen. We had the lights on us. We'd not had any fresh air or anything. And I was just like, whoa, fucking hell, this is an experience. You know? And then <laughs> I laid down and everything just went really quiet. And then the next thing were done. Need you need to get up. <laughs> and I'm like, I ain't even fucking, I ain't even, right. been, is this 30 minutes? I'm like, you're joking, aren't you? Yeah. And then I walked out of the room and you just were like, wow. You look like you're on drugs. But I'm talking hardcore drugs. Yeah. I'm not talking dabbling in a little <laughs> bit of weed. Like, he had done the hard like stuff. Like some proper hallucinogenic. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Loads of it as well. You were so spaced out. Gone. And what did you say that really, really made me laugh? Can you remember? There was something where you came out at that moment and you just interrupted me in the middle of interviewing, I think it was Lee. It was Park Life, wasn't it? And I said it like, blur, you know that song? Yeah, Park Life. you just randomly but said that. But said something about life. And then I just, that was the first thing that came into my head and I just said it like, Park that's life. the thing about that. You know, when you, you're, so, you're so fucked, like you can't control anything. You don't have a thought process. Things just start coming out that, Mm. It <laughs> was like no, being drunk, wasn't it? It, it was. It, it, were, it were a mad experience. But they do say that though, don't they? It's like um, when you reach a certain level of sleep deprivation or being sleep deprived. Edit that, Jimmy. I sounded shit. <laughs> Make me sound intelligent, please. <laughs> <laughs> when you reach a certain level of being sleep deprived, it is more dangerous than being drunk. Yeah. Like for driving. Mm. So that's where we were at, right? 53 hours. Um... And I think one of the hardest things is when you're exhausted and you finally get to sleep, you, you, you're you like, right, I now need to sleep for 10 hours. But you just get 30 minutes and then get woken up. You feel 25 billion times worse for that sleep. And I, I mean, my mood was horrendous. I was like, fuck this, fuck the world record, fuck everybody. I just hate you all. It was the, wor the, the lowest my mood's ever been in that moment when we woke back up. My mood really dipped when we'd done like 24 hours. Mm. And I was like, oh, this is, this is bad. Fuck, we've got to do this again. Like this has been, this has been tough, but we've got to do it again. And, and some, and I was like, whoa. Mm. But that's, that's the thing about any task that you're going to do. If, it, if it's, if it's going to be a big task, yeah. you'll get moments yeah. within that task where your brain's really trying to talk you out of it. Don't matter whether it's a, mm. a personal best lift in the gym. If you've never lifted 60 kilos before on a deadlift and yeah. you're approaching it you're going to get a lot of things going on in your head saying i don't think you can do this yeah you'll always get that always but when you get used to ignoring it and ignoring it and going through it and mm. succeeding and succeeding again that's then when you can have the stupid mindset of going let's do a world record then yeah because you just get used to not listening to that nonsense that happens in your head but i've got to say that was the toughest part of it for me yeah when we did the 24 hours, it was about seven o'clock in the morning on the Saturday. And I was like, fucking hell, this is gonna be a long drag this now. But we did it. But we did it anyway. And you know, the biggest thing that helped me is not thinking about it too much. You know, in the run up to it, I didn't think about it. I was just prepping stuff, 
what needs to be done. And I think it comes back to what we said earlier, you know, just take action and keep going and figure it out as you go. And that's exactly what we did through that process. If we'd have thought, well, by hour six, we're going to be tired, so we'll have some coffee. Like, do you know, if we'd have planned it, I just think it would be so much worse. And I think that that goes for anything in life. You know, stop needing a plan and a blueprint for everything. Just keep moving forward. Because often we just overthink it and we get overwhelmed and we just make it worse. Yeah. And I think it's something like that would have been so easy to just be like, oh my God. God, you know, those thoughts you had in those moments when you're tired, we've only done 24 hours, that could become really toxic. Oh, it manifests itself. Exactly. Time. If you listen to that, it'll spiral. Yeah. And it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until you're a pop, that's it. And then you decide what you're going to do then at that point. And then that's your action mm. because you get to a, a thought process. If you've just got this little calm voice in the back of your mind going, quieten down. Yeah. Shut up. You can't do that. Shut up. Yeah. yeah, I can. You know what I mean? Just keep, stay calm. Just, cool. just shut up. Keep don't moving. Listen. Don't, don't even go there. I'm not listening to you right now. And you just keep going. Then you, you'll get there. Whatever it is that you try to do. So you spoke briefly about 2016 being some of your lowest moments. Obviously, we touched upon the divorce. Now you're kind of coming through the other side of that. For anybody that's maybe in a similar position, I think first and foremost, if you could give us a bit of an idea what that position was. I think what would be your main advice for somebody that's in that position now that you were in at your lowest? Where do you want me to start? Well, m mentally, where were you at? What was going on and, and how was you feeling? Um, I'd been suppressed from being who I wanted to be. You know, my authentic self was being suppressed and it was, you know, it were kind of like, when you know when somebody loves you but they love you too much and they don't want you to be you because they're scared, it were like that. So then I would just scared of you changing. Yeah. So then I would just appease in my ex wife's feelings all the time of I don't want to rock the apple cart, I don't want to upset her, I don't want to rock our apple cart of we're trying to raise two amazing kids, which they still are. And you know, that was a, a high level of so uh, responsibility that I put on my shoulders that I didn't want, I, I was trying to control everything that, that I felt out of control of because mm. I weren't being me. Mm. And it, and it was like making me feel quite anxious. Then it got to a certain point where as I were changing and sort of flourishing and, and being more open-minded and researching more and, and wanting to grow more and explore more, it started to get worse mm. because I were in that, I were, I were like I'm trying to go this way but I'm getting pulled that way and my anxiety were going through the roof and then it sort of peaked by having some really really like dark thoughts and I mean disgustingly dark thoughts and it weren't like me I've never th thought like that I've never thought you know potential suicidal thoughts and stuff like that and I were like oh what the fuck's wrong with you Dan What's going on in here? And then it, because I were confused about my thoughts, it were increasing my anxiety. And then I'm having meltdowns in the toilet at the gym and I'm just trying to do the best that I can. But I was really making the balls of it. Mm. So I had to make a decision, which I knew that were going to hurt a few people. You know, not just my family, my immediate family, but two separate families that have divorced is horrible. For everybody, you know what I mean? You, all families get close and it ain't mm. nice. Mm. And I knew that I were, gonna, I were responsible for making that happen, which tormented me. So then it got worse again. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, oh man, this, is, this just sucks. But then it got to the point where like, well, they need me here rather than not here. Because I could potentially be not here with how I'm feeling right now. Do you know what I mean? So when, when it got to that point, I was like, I gotta go. And then I just had to consolidate and go again, you know, get get rid of that stigma of, you know, the worst advice that I've ever heard is, um, what's that old school saying? You made your, you've made your bed, so now you lie in it. Mm. It's the shittest saying ever. Mm. So shit. Because what, what does that mean? All right, well, now this bed's turning toxic and it's affecting not only you, but everybody else around it. All right, stay there. Yeah, great advice. No, 
go go change that bed and go make it somewhere else and and, and allow peace and tranquility mm. in everybody else's life you know that that's bad advice that so yeah that 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 was where I were at I knew I needed to change and then that's when we went off on our journey then as well and pretty much at the same time it comes back to courage again right because you knew it in the media you're gonna really hurt people but in the long term it's what was necessary for everyone to be happier and I think that's one of the biggest takeaways I took from what you went through is it's making the hardest difficult decisions in the short term for the greater good and a lot of people stick in relationships and friendships and circumstances that ultimately are just not fulfilling them and they get to the end of the life and then think fuck I've wasted it and you didn't want to be that person you wanted for your kids to make sure they had the best version of their dad and the best version of their mum yeah and now they're getting that really yeah yeah I can see that and that's great and now they're happier so the vision worked in the end the process were disgusting but you've got to it's go usually, through it. It's usually the case. Of course. Like building muscle or losing fat or, you know, when you're going against the grain of something and you have to behave in a different way, it's going to get tough. It's not going to be all sunshine and rainbows. It's hard work. And sometimes it can be, you know, debilitating to your thoughts and you can have burnouts and you can have meltdowns and you can cry and all sorts and, it, you know, get on anxious and and that's okay well, like, all right it. yeah that's that's it that's that is the growth unfortunately are you happier now than ever yeah yeah I am. so there's a lesson there right yes yeah. it's, it's you have to go through that and actually you probably appreciate the little things more because you went through that i always say how can you really truly appreciate feeling happy if you've not really felt sad how can you really appreciate being in good shape if you've never been really out of uh, out of um out of shape Mm. and fat and overweight and unhappy about it how can you really ever appreciate money if you've just always had it if you've never been broke and struggling so through the struggle is what creates the greatness well it's it's being happy with nothing external mm. you've got the well. internal validation now yeah you know who you are yeah. your intentions are pure and you're being the best you can every day and, I, and i've been happy ab about that with whatever comes yeah. and, and now i'm in a relationship in a, with an absolutely amazing human being, amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not saying that my ex-wife is not an amazing person. Mm -hmm. She's just not for me, and 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 I'm not for her. Yeah. That's all that. And that's is. okay. You know, and, and now she's in a relationship where she's really happy with a nice guy, and my kids love him. You happy know what days, I mean? So that's days. all good. Yeah. That's it. You know, drop your ego. You say it all works out in the end. Just before we started recording, you spoke about how you've obviously been further in your education when it comes to fitness, when it comes to health, diet, and you said you realised only recently that you'd actually had what would be classed as an eating disorder. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, I think there's a, you, you know, through old school methods, um, old school literature about nutrition, you know, things like carbohydrates, mm. raising insulin, being bad for you. Um, you know, they can be deemed as the devil. They'll put, they'll put weight on you. And that can be true in some cases. But you've got to be kind of like spiralling out of control mm. for it to get like that. As long as you're controlling um, your dosage on things, which is always going to be the message, and you don't overdo one thing so for example protein you got to hit your protein goal yes you do but don't eat too much your protein goals your protein it's not like you can over exceed that and that's mm. going to be good for you as well and that's what i were doing so some foods for example would have been deemed as right let's say the work week diet situation monday to friday i do this i don't i don't cheat i don't cheat on my diet that's bullshit as well that's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Like you're not allowing yourself things you enjoy. Some, just something that you enjoy in life. Yeah. As long as you know the nutritional side of it. Yeah. And you haven't right, all right. So if you were to have an ice cream but you're lactose intolerant, well that's a bad idea. But if you're not, fucking knock yourself out. Just how much are you gonna have? 
Are you going to have one ball? Are you going to have two? And then if you have two, then is that going to, are you going to re, raid the biscuit tin? Do you know what I mean? Are you asking me? The, an <laughs> the answer is yes to it all. Do, do you know that? But first I'm having a third ball. What I'm saying <laughs> is, are you, in co are you in control of, I'm going to enjoy this, I'm going to yeah. take my time with it, and that's it, and I'm done. And I know where I am on a calorie standpoint, and I know how many steps I'm roughly hitting a day, and I, I know that I'm active, I'm healthy, and I'm training. My so that's understanding good. all that, having the education, but also having the mindset and the mental control, working on your emotional um, Yeah, it's your behaviour. It's your yeah. behaviour and, and, and your discipline. But also having the understanding of, this is okay. If you take something away from a human being, or, or an animal, in fact, any animal, they, want it they, did, a, they did a test on, on monkeys. It were in a, a Tony Robbins book that I read, and it were about money. And they gave um, a monkey a banana, and, it, and this monkey were absolutely best best thing ever, loving this banana. They gave another monkey two bananas, happy, happiest thing ever. They took one banana away, and it went crazy because they took it away from it. Mm. Well, he still had one banana like mm. the other one did. Mm. If you take something away, mm. and that's and that's the right, you can never eat bread ever again. Yeah. Would you want bread? 100%. Probably wake up next day wanting a sandwich. All you'd want to do. I don't give a fuck about sandwiches. I think but sometimes it, I eat them. Yeah. <laughs> do you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So It's not labelling it as bad or yeah. good. I think yeah. that's important. Yeah, get rid of that. And calling it a cheat. Yeah, it's not a cheat. It's nutrition. It's food. Yeah. If, if it triggers your body, if you eat something and you think, wow, I'm bloated or I've got, you know, really bad diarrhoea or I feel, um, you know, unenergised. My performance is down when I train. Well, yeah, we need to look at that then because that's probably not for you. But for you specifically, what what's the line where you class it as an eating disorder that you had? What was it? Um, eating too much protein, eating clean foods only, um, not being as flexible with my approach, under eating, then over consuming, guilting myself and shaming myself into eating too much and then having to feel like I had to work it off. Mm. We that, spoke about it. I remember that's times an, where... That's an it, unhealthy relationship with food. We had days where we'd be sat in the office all day. You'd be consistently going, I need to get my steps in. I need to get... And you'd be walking up and down, up and down. It was like an obsession. Yeah. And to some degree, it needs to be a top priority. But there's a bigger picture. And it's like, if you're constantly making that, I need my steps, I need my steps... Well, then it starts to then become unhealthy. Yeah, everything can be. Everything's got limitations to it. And, and now do you feel you've found a really good sweet spot for you and your relationship with food? And I'm myself and my own body image. You know, like I've been a lot leaner. I've been in a lot better aesthetic condition than what I am now. But I'm back playing rugby again. Yeah. Which is another part of my joy and my happiness now. I'm back playing a game. I've not played it for 14 years. Jesus, man. Mm. Like... And it's taking it out of my body, but I love it. Yeah, I, I love the physicality and the challenge of it. Um, and I'm just I'm picking up my stride again. I'm actually getting back into it. Like I'm I'm contributing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I'm scoring. You're and not just there. I'm not to just show make, up. I'm not just making up the numbers. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm making an impression on the game. Yeah. Which which is again I wouldn't play the game if I couldn't do that. Mm. And and I'm loving it. But part of that means I have to be a bit more physical. All right. Well, I can't be. I can't be 75 kilos ripped yeah. to shreds. 5% body fat. When, when a fucking 16 stone lad's steaming at me. Yeah. You know, like I've got to stop him in his tracks. How, how am I going to do that? I've got to put a bit of beef on. So I'm okay with this. We're spilling out a little bit. I'm not as lean as I used to be. And you're more comfortable than ever. So what? Yeah, good. I don't care. I really don't Your care. Your priorities has changed and your relationship with yourself has changed. Yeah. And, and it's that that stigma attached to, you know, being fought already all the time, like, that that ain't healthy either. It, well, it's just not it, healthy, it control it? it controls your mind too much. Yeah. To be thinking about every mouthful, mouthful of everything every step, and everything every, that yeah. you do. Macro, every... Yeah. yeah, which... Micro. And having the knowledge is really important because I know that if you said to me, Dan, I want you fought already in a fortnight, I'll be fought already in a fortnight. Yeah. If I want, but I'm not bothered. 
Love so it. that that's that's when I now feel like I'm winning there. Yes. And that's what, again what what I'm urging my clients to find that place when they say I want to be X amount of body fat. I want to do this. I'm like I always play devil's advocate yeah. with Why? them. Why? Why do you want to do that? What's Let's the reason? Let's talk about this yeah. first. Yeah. I spend a lot of my coaching time talking because when they understand outcomes and they understand what they need to do that's so much more powerful mm. than me just flogging them for an hour yeah workout intensity is important to learn as well that's part of the you know what i coach because a lot of people don't do things with the correct intensity but also like where's this taking you where where do you want to go here mm. and you know that that's that's a gift through my own experience that I can now pass on to other people as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Not with that. Are people that I know. Mm. I just want to say it's a pleasure. We're going to have to wrap up, but um, I want to thank you. You you know you're a massive part of reaching success. You're a massive inspiration to me, and you've played a massive part in my journey and me getting to where I've got. And I want to say thank you for that. But also to all the people that you're out there inspiring daily. You know, being a coach isn't an easy path to take. You've done it now, what, 15 years? It's going on, yeah. 15 years experience on the ground floor, you know, working with a variety of different people. Your knowledge is second to none. And I know you don't like to big yourself up, so I'm going to do it for you. Literally, if you need to know anything about diet, nutrition, training, you know, um, um, flexibility, all that kind of stuff, you, there isn't a better person people can learn from than you. Um, what I want to say as well is, and we're going to show a little trailer of this, if you want to hear this um, special additional interview with Dan, which is his top five tips on how to live a happier and healthier lifestyle, and also his top five dietary tips if you're interested in learning more about nutrition to make sure that you're looking after your, your physical health and you are as healthy as you can. Make sure you now sign up to our brand new Rich in Success members only area. This is an exclusive interview, especially for you guys. We'll put all the links everywhere. It's probably on screen now, isn't it, Jimmy? Please, oh. thank you very much. Um, and the link will be in the bio. The link will be in the show notes. Do join me and Dan. Here's a little trailer of that. Give the people the value. We've got first and foremost, five tips to live a healthier lifestyle. A lot of people don't. That's why we, you know, we have a nation of obesity because people aren't sleeping well either. And that's down to- Initially, it might be one of the hardest things you have to do, but long-term, it will always be the right thing to do. And I struggle with that mm. too. I just want to know that's a struggle of mine. That I also sense. think it gives me um, more clarity and more creative ideas come to mind. It does, 100%. Oh, here we go, oh, come on. Do it's important I mean? people hear that because they'll think, oh, well, you love it. I love I love the feeling and I love the challenge. I don't always want to do it. Yeah. What do you think it gives people when they have that absolute moment of being present and having nothing else? What do you think is the main benefits? Your body secretes 1.5 litres of water every day on average. Average. If the answer is yes, then you've got to keep reminding yourself of that. And that's why what you said there about having a clear why is an integral part of that. Make sure you know what your why is. So like I said, do make sure you head over to the membership area, sign up to become a Rich in Success members where every week you'll get exclusive content like that. Um, and like I said, this week's exclusive interview is with Dan, giving you his five tips on how to have a healthier lifestyle and his five tips on diet and nutrition. Um, just before we go, Dan, thank you. Thank and you, And the man. question that I always ask, what's your definition of success? Oh, mate, again, you caught me off guard there, actually, with that one. Just be you. <laughs> Come off it, Dan. Jesus, be... you know we asked this to every guest. I know, I know, <laughs> but I, I, didn't think, I didn't think you were going to go there with me again today. Just be you. Just do you. As long as you're not hurting people, just do you with integrity. Have a goal keep continuing to be mindful of growth I would say and just enjoy relax relax a bit more there's too much pressure on people now like just just do you well the best that you can love it Dan seriously mate thank you very thank very you. much
Thank you. Um, guys, thank you as always for tuning in to the Rich in Success podcast. If you found this valuable and you think others will take value from listening, please do me a favour and make sure you share this episode. Put it on your Instagram stories. Make sure you've subscribed, downloaded, rated, reviewed, sent me a private message saying that you think I'm absolutely amazing because my ego needs it, motherfucker. Um, but in all seriousness, thank you as always. I appreciate the continued support and the continued encouragement. Don't forget as well, for the exclusive bonus content, head over to the Rich in Success members area right now. And until then, I'll see you on the next episode of Rich in Success as the journey of self-discovery and personal growth continues. Thank you very much. <laughs>